Well, hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. And today I want to go ahead and look at um, vector-borne diseases. We've seen several reports in uh, the past couple weeks of some vector-borne diseases, particularly tick-borne diseases, um, primarily in the Northeast. I just want to uh, cover, the, cover these stories and, and let you know what's going on um, with them. But this, is, this article from Helio... Uh, came out a few years ago, and it was based on a vital signs report from the CDC. And it said, according to data from a new CDC vital signs report, more than 640,000 cases of vector-borne illness like Zika, West Nile virus, and Lyme disease were reported to the National Notifiable Disease Surveillance System by state health departments from 2004 through 2016, although the actual total is thought to be much higher. And if we go down here, you can actually see in the chart how from 2004, they had about 27,000 vector-borne diseases, diseases uh, from mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas. And that number essentially tripled to 2016 with 96,000. Now, of these uh, vector-borne diseases, tick-borne diseases are by far the most. Um, the 16 vector-borne illnesses that state health, health departments are required to report include nine mosquito-borne diseases, which include West Nile, dengue, chikungunya, and Zika uh, among them, and six tick-borne diseases, which include Lyme disease, which is by far the most prevalent vector-borne disease in the country, with more than 400,000 cases reported over the study period. And, and that's likely low-balling it, right? Now, plague is the only nationally notifiable flea-borne illness in the country. It remains rare and is reported primarily from the Southwest. So, and there's been several new tick-borne diseases reported over this span of time. So let's go ahead and move on. And this is from the CDC, and this is this is just a list of the tick-borne diseases uh, in the United States. And we have anaplasmosis, babesiosis, Colorado tick fever, ehrlichiosis, uh, a couple of new ones, right? Heartland and bourbon virus diseases, of course, Lyme disease, Powassan virus, um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, a very dangerous one, um, tick-borne relapsing fever, tularemia, and so on and so forth. So there are a number of tick-borne diseases in the United States. It's not just Lyme disease. Now, some recent reports that have come out, uh, all from the Northeast, but I thought they were very interesting because it just seems like in the past week or so, two weeks, we've just been inundated with some of these reports and this is from the department of health in connecticut and this was sometime in mid-june and they reported two connecticut residents have tested positive for powassan virus infection uh, these are the first cases of powassan virus associated illness identified in connecticut this year between 2016 and 2020 uh, connecticut reported 10 total cases, including two last year, and two of the total of the 10 infections were fatal. What do we know about these patients? They were between 50 and 79 years of age, um, and they became ill uh, during the third week of April. Um, they were residents of Fairfield and New Haven counties. All right, so that, that, that was the earliest report. And then after this came out, the reports just kept on coming. Um, the next one was out of Maine. The Maine CDC reported around June 29th, a, their first case of Powassan virus infection of the year. And this is in a Waldo County resident um, who is currently recovering after spending time in the hospital. Uh, Powassan is, is one of the rarer uh, tick-borne diseases in the US, but as you'll see later, more and more cases are being reported year after year. Um, 
Maine has seen nine cases since 2010. Um, so, right, it's, it's not a super common disease. However, it is um, one of the more dangerous of the tick-borne diseases that are out there. And then we got this out of the Rhode Island Department of Health, and they reported also reported a case of Powassan virus in one of their residents. It was a um, previously healthy male over the age of 70 from Providence County who developed neurological symptoms in, and is now recovering. Um, good for him. Um, and that is part of the pathology of Powassan virus is, is neurological. So, and here's some uh, key Powassan information that uh, Rhode Island put out. It says Powassan is a tick-borne disease that is found mostly in the Northeast and the Great Lakes regions of the U.S. and Eastern Canada. Uh, I believe the name derived from a town in Canada, if I'm, if I um, am correct. Over 166 cases of Powassan have been reported in the U.S. in the past 10 years. Powassan cases are rare, but the reported number of cases increased in recent years. Between 2010 and 2019, there were 56 cases of Powassan reported in New England, uh, with a good portion of those being reported in Massachusetts. Okay, and then the other, the last um, uh, recent report of a tick-borne disease that I wanna talk about real quick before we move on to other uh, information about these diseases is in Onondaga County, New York. That's in central New York, uh, in the Syracuse, New York area. And it says, Onondaga County Health Commissioner, Dr. Indu Gupta, announced the emergence of anaplasmosis, a tick-borne disease that is typically rare in central New York. In the previous five years, a total of three cases were reported in Onondaga County. So far this year, in 2021, there have been six reported cases. So, so during a period of about two weeks, we got inundated with these uh, reports of tick-borne diseases other than Lyme disease um, in parts of the Northeast. So I, I found that interesting. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about these diseases a little bit more. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about anaplasmosis real quick. And this is, a, this is actually a bacterial disease. Um, the bacterium is called Anaplasma phagocytophilum. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. And it is a bacterial disease. It's spread by uh, the same tick, right? The black-legged tick or Exoides scapularis. Um, the same tick that transmits Lyme disease, uh, Babesiosis, uh, Powassan virus too, same thing. Um, People with anaplasmosis will often have fever, headache, chills, and muscle aches. And doxycycline is the drug of choice um, for adults and children for anaplasmosis. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the stats with anaplasmosis. Um, the number of anaplasmosis cases reported to the CDC has increased steadily since the disease became reportable. From 348 cases in 2000 to a peak of 5,762 in 2017. Um, the case fatality rate is, is, is low, it's less than 1%. But here you go, you can, here's the chart, and you can see how it went from a few hundred to 5,700 in 2017. And fortunately, by 2018, it did drop down uh, to somewhere in the ballpark of 4,000. But Still, very, 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 very steady, kind of a rapid rise uh, in this um, in this parasite or this um, bacterial infection. Uh, next, I want to go ahead and just briefly talk about Powassan virus. And as we saw, there were, I, w I went over four brand new cases in the past couple weeks: two in Connecticut, uh, one in Maine, and one in Rhode Island. And Powassan virus is spread to people by the the bite of infected tick. Again, the same tick that spreads anaplasmosis, babesiosis, and Lyme disease. Um, still pretty rare, but the number of people uh, being infected, uh, getting sick from Powassan is increasing. 
Uh, most cases in the United States occur in the Northeast and the Great Lakes regions. Um, and it's a viral disease, so there's no real um, uh, treatment for it. There's no vaccine for it. Um, so really the best way to um, not getting Powassan virus is by avoiding ticks. And I wanted to go ahead and look at the statistics and maps on Powassan virus. And here you can see the number of cases of Powassan virus neuroinvasive disease from 2010 to 2019. And you can see, you know, single digits in 2010. And in 2019, there was 39 neuroinvasive diseases. So, um, and if you take a look at the map of where these cases popped up in that, during that decade, um, primarily, as, as, as I said earlier, primarily in the um, uh, northern Midwest, right, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and also the Northeast, uh, Massachusetts had, you know, over 30, New York had 20 o over that decade. So, um, rare, but being seen more frequently as we've seen already in the past couple weeks. And let me go ahead and close with this. Uh, very good article from NPR that came out in recent days uh, about tick-borne diseases. And a section of this article I just wanted to go over real quick because I thought it was pretty decent. And it says, know your tick types. And this is a beautiful photograph that they put together of different ticks. Uh, what we have here is the Lone Star Tick. Next to that is the black legged tick, the axoides, the one we've uh, kind of emphasized so far in this video. Um, here we have the Asian longhorn tick, uh, a new uh, tick that's been seen in the United States probably just over the past three or four years. Um, down here we have the Gulf Coast tick, the American dog tick, and the far right on the bottom is the Rocky Mountain wood tick. And, um, and let's just talk about a few of these ticks. The black-legged tick, also referred to as the deer tick, can carry Lyme disease, babesiosis, ehrlichiosis, anaplasmosis, and Powassan. Um, an adult, full-grown black-legged tick is about the size of a sesame seed. A nymph is the size of a poppy seed. And um, so something to keep your eye on right there. Um, the Lone Star Tick, an aggressive, instead of questing from a blade of grass like a black-legged tick, it may pursue a person 50 to 75 feet away. So, very aggressive. The Lone Star Tick can carry ehrlichiosis, heartland disease uh, virus, tularemia, another very, very serious disease, and Southern Tick-Associated Rash Illness, or STAR Illness. Um... And this is the tick also that's behind the um, meat allergy disease um, that we've read about in recent uh, years. Uh, the American dog tick, also known as a wood tick, can carry Rocky Mountain spotted fever, one of the deadliest tick-borne diseases, and tularemia, another one not to uh, shake a stick at, pretty serious uh, um, bacterial disease. Uh, the Rocky Mountain Wood Tick can spread Colorado tick fever in addition to Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Tularemia. And the Asian Longhorn Tick, which has really gotten a lot of attention in the past couple years. Um, it was first seen in the U.S. in 2017 uh, on a sheep in New Jersey. And since then, it's been seen in, in over a dozen states. Um, fortunately, right now, they have not been able, uh, they have not been found to transmit any disease in the U.S., so let's cross our fingers on that. Then they go over this little section about how to avoid being bitten. And um, this is some of their uh, uh, their steps to avoid getting bitten by a tick. And number one, they say, is get dorky. Repelling ticks starts with your outfit. Choose long sleeves and pants if possible. And it may feel dorky, but tucking your pants into your socks gives ticks less access into the areas they can bite. And this is according to uh, Dr. Bobby Pritt up at the Mayo Clinic. Um, and she herself says she wears white, over, white coveralls and duct tapes the legs of her socks when going on tick drags. 
Okay. Also, you know, uh, spray exposed skin with a good repellent. Uh, and strip. Number two is strip. After you go out, even if it's just mowing the lawn, um, disrobe fully, shed all your clothes before going inside uh, to keep any hangers on outside if possible. Jump in the shower, check for ticks and scrub. And they can be tiny, particularly at the nymph stage. And um, uh, so you, you got to really search all areas of your body too, including the head, the groin, and other areas. And disinfect, throw your discarded clothes into the dryer on high heat for at least six minutes. That'll kill any stragglers. And finally, what to do if you do get bitten? Uh, Dr. Pritt says, don't panic. It's a hard rule to follow, but remember that not every tick carries a harmful bacteria or virus. Number two is forget the folk remedies. Grab a pair of fine tip tweezers, remove as quickly as possible, as close to the skin as you can by pulling it out in a smooth, continuous motion without twisting it. Uh, no, you don't need to light a match or roll, roll it in butter. Um, and she says, uh, Dr. Pritt says, in fact, the, those methods often result in only partial removal. So just yank that sucker out um, with a quick uh, continuous motion, no twisting. Number three, save it. Put the tick in a plastic bag in the freezer, um, especially if you think it's been attached to a long time, which may increase the risk of Lyme disease transmission. And if, um, if you do decide to go see, uh, seek medical care, uh, they should be able to identify the tick for you and possibly even test it. And lastly, watch for symptoms. A rash, headache, flu-like symptoms, joint pain can all be signs of Lyme, anaplasmosis, ehrlichiosis. A stiff neck and swollen lymph nodes are also associated with Lyme disease. Um, so all key points. Um, very good article from NPR. I, I really appreciated that one. It came down at just the right time when we're starting to see, um, you know, the, the, the press releases from these different health departments were all about Powassan or anaplasmosis, and, but it didn't touch on, you know, how many babesiosis cases we have seen so far or um, how many Lyme disease cases, which are probably quite a few. So anyway, uh, that's it. I just wanted to do this little introduction to some of the news that's been going on with tick-borne diseases in the Northeast and uh, some other uh, news that go, went along with it. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, please uh, share this with your friends, family, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment below, and I'll see you next time.